The United Nations, which is the second most cancerous assembly of people following closely behind the women of The View, is now trying to make migration a human right. And better yet, if you oppose tens of thousands of third world migrants coming into your country, you can get arrested. Like, you're not sneaky. We've all read 1984. We know what you're doing. And no, you aren't about to officially recognize the concept of thought crime on a global scale, you power-hungry wannabe tyrants. <laughs> John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, pals and gals. Welcome, as always, to Heck Off Kami. As I stated in my intro, the United Nations is once again proving itself to just be the absolute worst. I don't know why anyone takes them seriously. So there's this thing called the UN Migration Pact, and Trump actually made America the first country to withdraw from it, and it seeks to make migration a human right. It will also criminalize speech that is anti-migrants and will give governments the authority to shut down media outlets that oppose migration. Let me repeat that. It will allow the government to shut down media outlets that oppose the importation of hundreds of thousands of third world migrants. I challenge you to find me something more Orwellian than that. It's absolutely insane. Take a look at this guy, Marcel de Graaf, explaining it in the European Parliament. And one basic element of this new agreement is the extension of the definition of hate speech. The agreement want to criminalize migration speech. Criticism of migration will become a criminal offense. And media outlets, and that also concerns you, that give room to criticism of migration can be shut down. The media only like to show the Europeans that are just as much Marxist and, glo and globalist as they are. So when you see a guy like this making sense, you're almost like refreshed by it. You're like, oh, you, you guys do have some thinkers over there. So this pact is going to expand the definition of hate speech, which is another step in the wrong direction, considering that something like 3,500 people are arrested every year by British police for being offensive on the internet. They're literally, they're living in a JV version of Oceana over there. And Orwell is one of their best thinkers too. Like how can you go to your job as a police officer in Britain to arrest someone for an offensive online comment while you're driving past statues that celebrate the cultural impact of George Orwell. Britain actually just reached 100,000 signatures in the petition to oppose this pact, so now it'll have to be debated in the British Parliament, and a handful of other countries have withdrawn from it too. Countries like uh, Austria, Hungary, Italy, Israel, more on Israel actually in a second, because these countries, they're watching the effects of mass migration from the third world happen right next door to them. Europe is small, um, in comparison to the US. So someone living in Italy that's watching France literally go up in flames, watching the rape and violent crime rates skyrocket, watching police be unable to stop any of it after all the migrants showed up. That's a geographical equivalent of someone living in New York watching the same thing happen in Chicago. Both are about 800 miles away from each other. That's the main reason why these radical right-wing parties are becoming so popular in Europe. It would just so happen that those parties oppose migration from the third world. And it would just so happen that after watching their neighboring countries go up in flames, a lot of people are like, yeah, maybe this is not for us uh, to take in these migrants. And, you know, uh, what good does it even do? I mean, if we take in the best the country has to offer, we leave the country with fewer skilled and talented people to improve it. If we take in the worst the country has to offer, well, then there goes our country. Poverty is decreasing rapidly. People's lives are getting better. Do you know how many people there are in the world that would qualify to migrate to a Western country, though? Billions. I mean, technically, anyone would qualify, actually, since it would make migration a human right, which we'll get into in a second along with that Israel thing. I did not forget, but... It's literally impossible to solve this problem by letting them into our country. We could take in a hundred million. We still would have barely made a dent. This problem is improving, and the only way that it's going to continue to improve is if we continue to set the examples of economic and personal freedom that has been allowing these countries to improve for the last few decades anyways, like we have been. Also, asylum claims, they're total BS. Do you know what would happen in America if it started imploding on itself, assuming that it isn't already? We'd fix it. Go ahead, roll your eyes. You know that we would fix it. What happens when America falls? What happens when the West falls? A strong case could be made that some countries in Europe have already established their own collapse because of this, and now it's just a matter of time. Countries like France and Sweden. We can't afford this. It's cultural suicide, and the foundation of the West is our culture. America has no culture, it's just a bunch of different cultures. Shut up, we invented the meritocracy, which allows people like you to make a living hating on America because there's a bunch of people living in this country that will pay to watch you hate America for some reason. Capitalism has just now proven itself to be flawed to me. That's a joke, communism is for the weak. 
Hey guys, if you're liking this video so far, go ahead and click subscribe and like down below and uh, yeah, we'll get back to it. The UN's idea of a human right is totally incorrect and it stems from their declaration of human rights that they doctored up in 1948. And although it's not legally binding, this is the document that has legitimized the broad application of the idea of what is and what is not the human right. So you start to read this over, there's 30 in total and it's like, okay, number one, you're born free and equal and we should all be nice to each other. And you're like, oh, hell yeah. Okay, what's next? Number 10, we're all entitled to be treated fairly under the law and during that, uh, during trial, you know, that's awesome. That's great. 20, we have the right to assemble peacefully and we're not to be compelled to belong to any association. Like, man, maybe this isn't so bad. Wait a minute. And then they hit you with it. Number 22, you're entitled to social security. Number 25, you have the right to housing and healthcare. Just takes a total left turn, quite literally speaking. The last one, number 30 is actually the most interesting, I think, because it basically says that you can't use any of these rights to infringe upon the rights of others. And that actually eliminates the validity of like the last 10 of these, because in order to have these rights, someone else's rights are inherently going to be infringed Upon. What is a right? What is a human right? Literally, all you are entitled to is protection against the initiation of force. That's it. Those are your rights. You have the right to be free from what others might want you to do. That's what your freedom of speech is. That's what your Second Amendment is, your Fourth Amendment. And yes, I'm citing the Bill of Rights because it's been the most successful guideline for what is and how it should be protected, your human rights. So uh, here's where it gets shady. They've stretched the definition for rights to something physical that I am entitled to. I am entitled to housing simply because I exist. I'm entitled to healthcare because I exist. No, you aren't. You're entitled to pursue those services without infringement from other people, but you yourself are not entitled to anything that requires others to serve you. I'm entitled to health care. Who's health care? Who's giving it to you? At what cost? Who's paying the healthcare provider? Healthcare is not a human right because healthcare is a commodity. And when you use the stupid UN declaration on what human rights are, despite it literally saying that it shouldn't be used as a template for the state to infringe on others, you are now forcing doctors to serve you at the discretion of the state or face consequences. What does that do? Removes the incentive for people to become doctors. Now what happens? You've got a bunch of people entitled to state guaranteed healthcare and fewer doctors to serve them. Then what happens? You've got 3.4 million Brits on medical wait lists. You've got 52,000 Canadians fleeing to the US for treatment because they don't want to be on a waiting list. You've got the state deciding whether or not you get to live or die, like that baby boy, uh, Charlie Gard, whose parents wanted to have him treated in the United States for his life-threatening disease, but the state decided against it. They also decided that he was suffering too much to be kept alive, so they withdrew his life support after the parents were finally defeated. Tragic. That's what rationing does. So, Israel. The UN wouldn't even condemn Hamas at the proposal of the United States for, I don't know, maybe shooting a bunch of rockets at Israel from the Gaza Strip, which is interesting because it seems like an initiation of force to me, or in other words, a violation of the human rights of the Israeli citizens. So uh, it would seem like they're only concerned about upholding human rights when it's for fun stuff like housing and migration. Um, migration can't be a human right because if you migrate to a country without the permission of that country, you're initiating force, thereby violating the rights of the citizens of that country. So that's BS. One last thing that's BS, if you want to build something, you quite often have to have an environmental impact assessment done. Why don't we do that for migrants? I promise you that they have a larger impact on the environment than a gas station. Just ask the citizens of Paris. And of course, they'll say, well, the pact is non-binding. Countries aren't obligated to do anything that they don't want to do. Then effectively, what's the point of signing it? Really? I'll tell you what it is. It's so that it can be used as a segue into what the UN really wants. What's coming down the road, which is a large scale open borders initiative, similar to what the, U the EU has right now, but on a global scale, not a good move. But don't be caught saying that. I couldn't even post this video in Canada if I wanted to. They've already agreed to withhold public funds from media outlets that criticize immigration. Just three weeks after announcing, a government panel will be responsible for determining which media companies get access to a $595 million slush fund. The agenda is clear. Once again, America is going to be tasked with leading the fight for freedom against Europe's generally semi-centennial flirtation with the destruction of the West. I'm locked and loaded. Let's just get to it. Hey guys, if you like this video, click my face to subscribe. It works 100% of the time. Scroll down, give me a thumbs up. It works 100% of the time with regards to boosting your self-esteem. And uh, yeah, Christmas is coming. Thank you for watching and may God bless America.